Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about Luke chapter 20 verses 34 to 36 and all the different things we learned from what Jesus Christ said there. He was responding to a question that the Sadducees had asked him and there he said, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more. For they are equal unto the angels, and are the children of God, being children of the resurrection. So Jesus Christ said a lot of things here, and we're going to quickly highlight all the different things we learn from what Jesus said in these three verses. Number one, we learn that there is indeed a world to come. What does it mean that there is a world to come? It doesn't mean that there is another globe that, Christ, that God Almighty is going to create because if you read Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4, King Solomon had said, One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Therefore, there's not going to be this apocalypse that's going to happen and everything's going to be destroyed. Not really. Rather, it's that the system that exists in this world is going to change from an unrighteous system that currently exists to a righteous perfect and peaceful system that will govern the future eternal world. If you read 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13, Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17, Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 5, Psalm 46 verse 9, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4, and many other texts all over the scriptures. The second thing we learn from this text is that not all will inherit that world. Jesus said they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, showing that we have to be qualified to obtain it. Jesus said, for example, in Matthew chapter 10, verses 37 to 38, that whosoever loves father or mother or son or daughter more than him is not worthy of him. And in verse 39, he said that whosoever tries to save his life will lose it. And whosoever forsakes his life, that is, makes the kind of sacrifice to be able to serve God properly, will be able to save it. They'll be worthy of that world. So we have to be able to continue living righteously till the very end if you want to be worthy as the book of hebrews told us in hebrews chapter 3 verse 14 for we are made partakers of christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast on to the end then the third thing we learn from this text is that there is indeed a resurrection the reason why is simple it is because just as god almighty was able to create life and he's able to take life away, he's able to give it back. If you read Psalm 104, verses 29 and 30, Acts chapter 17, verses 25 to 26, and so on and so forth. Just as if we human beings construct a building and it falls, I mean, of course we can put it back together again, right? Life is like that to God Almighty. And if you read 2 Kings chapter 4, you can see that Elisha resurrected the son of the Shunammite woman. If you read John chapter 11, you can see Jesus resurrected Lazarus. In Luke chapter 8, verses 51 to 56, Jesus also resurrected somebody. Peter resurrected somebody. They, it happened all the time because it is indeed possible. And if you read John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said we shouldn't be surprised because a time is coming in the future when all who are dead, who are in the graves will hear his voice and will rise again those who lived righteously to everlasting life and those who did not to everlasting death then the fourth thing we learn from this passage is that in that world there will be no more death the reason is because it was sin that brought death according to romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but then you rounded it off by saying but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord Based on the fact that in the world to come, there will be no sin because the world will be a perfect world like it was in the Garden of Eden. If you read Revelation chapter 21 verse 4 and so on. Therefore, there will be no more death because there's no sin that will lead to death. If you read James chapter 1 verses 14 and 15 and other texts in the scriptures. The fifth thing we learn is the fact that there will be no more marriage. The reason for this is because... When God Almighty instituted marriage, it was so that a man and a woman could come together, build a future together, raise children for God together, run the race of salvation together. It was to kind of support each other as they tried to live a righteous life. But in the world to come, there will be no need to try to obtain anything because those who will have gotten to that world 
would have already proved themselves in this evil world if you read texts like Matthew chapter 24 and verses 12 and 13 and so on. So that dependence on another for emotional support and so on, or that idea of running the race with somebody simply won't exist and therefore there will be no marriage. And if there's no marriage, then there's also no having children. And then the last thing we learn is the fact that the angels are also like this. The angels do not have wives or husbands or children. God Almighty gives life to each and every one of them individually. They have no connection with each other. There's no blood kind of thing where um, you are blood related to this other angel. If you read Luke chapter 24 verse 39, there's nothing like blood up there. Each angel is individual and Christ was saying that we too in the world to come will also be like that. And these are all the things we learned from that Luke chapter 20 verses 34 to 36 account where Jesus once again said, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being children of the resurrection. So if you enjoyed this video and liked all the things I highlighted, then I'd appreciate if you click the like button and also the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I come back with yet another verse breakdown, just like the one you finished listening to, then you can click the notification bell. And if you want to check out the other channels we run, like at Pace to Fear God and Bible Q&A and Poems of Zion that talk about this same content but in different formats, they're always in the description below. You can check that out. Anyway, have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video.